Uh, John, two questions. Uh, obviously, now with Gareth leaving, um, it makes the decision and the spot uh, more available at that DP spot. But uh, with Steve Bates, the first time I think I can remember it's being specified that this player is signed under an under-22 initiative. Um, so as you look forward to that spot being open and how the calculus starts to work out and the amount of things that you get uh, by having a young DP versus a more established, I mean, with your scouting network, how do you look at that? Uh, and then the second thing for you, you uh, have been here since the beginning, I like to say, uh, BC, before Carlos. Uh, where does Gareth's goal in that MLS Cup final rank for you all time in LAFC goals? Um, yeah, thanks, Vince. I'll go in reverse order. I can't imagine there's been a, I, I mean, it, I think I remember all of them. There's nothing even close to Gareth's goal in terms of historical moments at LAFC. I think... Den Denis has an argument because with one goal, you win a title, whereas we still had to go to penalties. But yeah, I, I don't think anything... In terms of a moment in LAFC history, it's top for me. Uh, with regards to the roster and composition, there's still quite a few moving parts with inbound, outbound interest that we're still waiting for everything to happen and move to gain absolute clarity as to where what we're going to do and, and what will be possible. But I do, th I do foresee some more movement. I think today we saw the first round of additions. I don't think we're going to be announcing another four players by any means, but I do see some movement. It is well documented that some of our players have garnered quite a bit of interest, and they're here until they're not. And as long as they're here, they will be critical pieces of, of what we're trying to achieve this year. And your question about what our scouting group and uh, our data and, and that department, what they are doing is planning for those possible moves and making contingency plans in the event we do move another player. Okay, go ahead. Uh, John, I have a question on the status of Maxime Prepo. We know that he just won the MLS Cup. But you guys paid a big um, sacrifice losing him. How long will he be out? And how do you feel confident having Elden and McCarthy in goal? I'm pretty sure any of those could be your starter for this season. Yeah, I think it's worth referring to Max Max's act of heroism that helped get us to MLS get become MLS champions with uh, John stepping in in penalties, and it was the ultimate sacrifice. But I don't think it's one that he would change, nor would we. And Max is ahead of schedule. We, we know it's a, it was a clean break. The surgery went really well the day after the final. And he's in with the group in good spirits working. And you know, as we remind guys, one, every day is one step closer. It feels like a big mountain to climb. But he is doing everything he can to get back as soon as possible. And we've introduced Eldon here. I think we've seen what John can also bring to this group, which he did all of last year in pushing Max to be the best version of himself. And then when called upon, certainly showing very well for himself as well. So we did feel like adding Eldon was important at this stage. We also have a young goalkeeper who will be playing at MLS Next Pro and pushing these guys in Abraham Romero, as well as some of our academy kids coming through. So we feel very good about where we are. Despite Max's injury, we feel good about where we are at the goalkeeper position. John, buenas tardes. Eh, una pregunta. Um, obviamente, el anuncio de hoy es Garrett Bell, su retiro. Hasta hace unos días su nombre aparecía en el roster de pretemporada. ¿En qué momento cambió eso? ¿Y si hubo algún intento de parte del EFC por convencerlo de, de continuar? Bueno, recibí una llamada ayer, honestamente, ayer de Garrett y su representante explicando las razones y sus pensamientos. Y La realidad es que él está convencido, estuvo convencido en su decisión y la posición, posición nuestra es que entendemos uh, las razones y no eh, estuvimos planeando que él va a regresar, pero uh, por otro lado entendemos la situación que, uh, uh, suya y tenemos todo al respecto a, a Gareth, lo que nos ofreció durante el tiempo que estuvo aquí y él tiene nuestros deseos um, todo positivo al, al futuro. Josh, go ahead. Hey, John. Um, what does Gareth's removal from the roster mean in terms of your flexibility and the type of moves you can make this year? And 
as looking for a DP, uh, are you inclined to look younger, or do you feel like the state of the roster, the midfield sort of shape of that, especially if Sifu goes, you need a more established figure in that role? Yeah, good question. So obviously, Gareth leaving frees up. Uh, but what I think is well known in our league, like you, Josh, that understands and, and studies these things, it's really hard to keep a winning team together. And we've seen that with some recent departures that I wish were not leaving, but that is the reality of it. So it's a combination of us getting the roster in a good position and clarity on some of these moves that still may happen. And at that point, having absolute clarity on what is available in terms of resources and categories of player. Given where we are right now, if we do sign a designated player, it has to be a young designated player because we have more than one under 22 player we actually now have with Stipe and Sifu and Chiki, we still have three. So it has. To, if we do it, it would have to be for a young designated player. And if Sifu's gone, does that still stand, or is that a different scenario then? Then it's like for like. So if we sell an under-22 player, then it opens up an under-22 slot. Because even if we sell one of the under-22s, we still have two. Sorry to bore all of you with the uh, MLS regulations. But if you have more than one under-22 player, you cannot have three senior DPs. And we have two senior DPs in Dennis and Carlos. If I could ask just, just one more. Uh, when you signed Aaron Long, you mentioned uh, his agent in your statement. And it's the same agent as Ryan Hollingshead. I'm wondering if there's any connection there, if the relationship and the negotiation with Ryan played any factor in, in Aaron coming over. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. So his representative is, is Sean Higgins, both of them. And Sean is a guy I've known for a long time. He used to play in the league. And he also represented Marco Farfan. So the, the, you know, a lot of these agents we have great relationships with. We've had multiple players from a number of the agencies. But that, Josh, is what I was referring to when I say players talk. If I'm going and I'm presenting, and all we do with these players, we genuinely present what we are, what we're about, and there's no smoke and mirrors. I think Aaron had a, a talk with not just me, but also with Steve to understand what the plans were and where he fits in. But I have no doubt that Aaron will talk to his agent, will talk to Ryan Hollingshead to understand what is this all about. You give me your... They could tell me what it's like as a player, but I want to know from a player, what is it like at LAFC? So that's sort of what I'm referring to, is that it's a small world and how you treat people matters. So I, I don't know this to be true, but I am fairly confident that those conversations did take place. John, para los aficionados hispanos, después de la salida de Gary Bell, se espera eh, que ustedes nombren algunos otros fichajes, lo han hablado con Steve Chairúndolo, en donde se tiene que reforzar el equipo porque va a ser un torneo largo, tienen varias competencias. ¿En dónde creen ustedes que se van a reforzar? Y si se espera algún, eh, pues un nombre rimbombante en los próximos días. Sí, no sé si voy a tener algo en los próximos días, pero el plan ya es... Bueno, encontrar el equilibrio con, le, en lo que, con lo que podemos gastar y los recursos que va a venir. Hay algunos movimientos que pensamos que va a pasar con salidas, transferencias, que quizás va a pasar y eso va a tener influencia en lo que podemos hacer. Eh, ahora estamos enfocados en, uh, en mediocampistas. Obviamente hay noticias o no sé si es público, es público pero uh, con salidas de algunos de nuestros jugadores que necesitamos encontrar los sustitutos. Tuvimos un equipo con muchas opciones el año pasado y la intención en esta temporada con todos los torneos y la liga y todo y los partidos que vamos a tener eh, es tener lo mismo en, esta, en este año. On the back there. John, regarding uh, Gareth Bale, is there, um, how do you look at those very few months that he spent in the club, like feeling of mission accomplished? And is there a little bit of frustration that maybe you can have him a little bit longer uh, here at the club? When we signed Gareth last summer, we were committed, as was he, for a year. And we said, let's take this year and then see what, what the future holds. So we were planning on having him here this year and had plans on incorporating him as we did last year. I think the frustration, mostly for Gareth, but for us, as things were a bit stop-start at times. And I think there was temptation where that frustration would win the day when we talk about the narrative of what Gareth Bale's time at LAFC meant here. But at the end, it worked. That's all I, 
I mean, all we have an MLS Cup because of everybody, but without him, we don't have an MLS Cup. And when you talk about careers, and I know we, we released a statement that listed all of them, it was like half of the article is what he has won, and that is habitual, and I can't think of many careers uh, where he is like a serial champion, and he came here in summer, I want to win, and I want to help you guys. We were in first place at the time, but I want to help you guys win a title, and when you think about the steps along the way, it was like a storybook ending, because you were thinking, oh, how is this going to end? And with an ending like that, I don't think any of us could have scripted it, and we, you know, November 5th is a memory that we'll all have, and Gareth is a significant part of that. All right, thanks. We're going to take a few questions now um, remotely. We'll go back to Tom. Go ahead, Tom. Tom Bogart. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Uh, we got the timing right this time, John. Um, so I guess just... You always do things a little bit ahead of when you're supposed to. <laughs> I, can, I can hear the, uh, the happiness from that. Um, so what were those talks like with Gareth and representation? Whenever, when they came to you and said, you know, he plans on retiring, I plan on retiring... Was this something that was on the radar for a while, or did it kind of come up recently? Very recently. So we were planning on having Gareth in for our intake physicals with the rest of the players, and he had had a conversation with, with Steve on the timing of all that. I had spoken to his representative throughout his time at the World Cup. I think Gareth genuinely, at the conclusion of the World Cup, meant everything he said about continuing and both with Wales and LAFC, and that was our plan moving into this year. I received a call yesterday from the agent and from Gareth. I have the utmost respect for Gareth and, and um, his representative, Joshua Barnett, has been helpful from pre-Gareth to during Gareth and, and now getting the call yesterday. It did surprise us in one sense, but on the other hand, once they explained where he was at mentally, physically. We completely understood and respected the decision, and we, we appreciate their forthrightness in coming to us when they did. And we wish Gareth nothing but the best. I, you know, I just went on a long diatribe about his story here, and in six short months, I think the ultimate conclusion and moral of the story is that it worked. And so we wish Gareth nothing but the best. He is forever a part of... LAFC history, and we wish him, his wife, Emma, their kids, nothing but the best. All right, we'll go to a Scott French. Go ahead, Scott. Hi, John. Um, want to get your thoughts first off on, or maybe not thoughts, but uh, where Maxine is in terms of timeline coming back. Do you guys have a, a date or a span in which you're expecting him? And uh, in, in getting Jakubovic, uh, what kind of engineer are you going after him? I think Maxine Hip was a big part of that. And uh, kind of how did that timeline play out? Thank you. Yeah, hi, Scott. Uh, so I think talking about Max, his original timeline was about four to six months, which is a obviously a, a quite a very difference when you add two when you put two months together. But he's ahead of schedule. Surgery went really well. He's back with the group training on his own and doing as much gym work as he possibly can, getting his strength back. And then once he's able to get back out on the field, um, that will determine the the ultimate return date. But we do feel really good about Max's application. Uh, in terms of getting back as soon as he possibly can. And he's in great hands with our medical staff and the doctors. And as I mentioned earlier, soon, soon after the final, we gave ourselves time to celebrate as much as we could. And then when we thought about next year, goalkeeper, given Max's injury, is a position that we felt we needed to strengthen. And, and Eldon uh, was presented to us, and we felt he was the perfect fit to to push John and the others. And I also wanted to mention, as I did earlier, Abraham Romero, who will get valuable game time with our LAFC2 team that is coming online this year. So for all of those reasons, we thought Eldon was the right fit. He's got tremendous presence in the locker room. He's got great experience that not only has he had great experience, but he's willing to impart that experience on our young group, which we think will be fantastic for those guys. When did his I would say four to six weeks ago. Okay, great. Thank you, John. 
You got it. I will go to Alicia Rodriguez on Zoom. Go ahead, Alicia. Thank you. Uh, John, I think her S is in Spanish, but uh, I think it'd be worth uh, getting into English as well. Regarding your thoughts about the state of the roster heading into a very busy year, um, in particular with it being front loaded with the CONCACAF Champions League uh, coming up uh, pretty, pretty soon, uh, what, what are your thoughts about the state of the roster at this point? feel very good about the group we have. I, as I've mentioned a, a few times, I still do think when the markets around the world start to pick up a little bit, I wouldn't be surprised if there is more movement and we are prepared for that. But I've been watching training the last few days. The guys are incredibly excited about getting going, getting back, and the quality is there. I do think we still have some reinforcements coming that, that we need regardless of any outbound moves. And then any of those outbound moves uh, mentioned earlier, I think will be replaced on a like on a like for like basis. And I think our strategy this year, which is is different for the reason you referenced. Last year, we had an open designated player spot and we decided to give ourselves six months to make a more informed decision because the right option was not available 12 months ago. And that's what led us to Bowanga. And this season is a little bit different because we want to be heading into Champions League with as competitive a roster as possible. So we feel really good if we can maintain the group we have with a few reinforcements. I think we will be in a great position to compete on multiple fronts, which we will have to do this year. And, and right now, you see the excitement in guys' faces. You see the new blood that's freshened things up as well. So we feel very good, but we also understand that there are a few more moves that we need to make. Thank you. All right, we're going to just take two, three more questions. We'll go to uh, Edward Kawich. Go ahead, Edward. Champions League for you guys to be relevant in that first international tournament and uh, after winning the MLS Cup and also almost winning it, winning the Champions League in 2020. Yeah, anybody that watched LAFC compete in knocking out the three Mexican clubs the last time we were in Champions League, making it to our final and the bitter disappointment that we couldn't hang on against Tigres so that we could have advanced and been the first MLS team ever to win Champions League in its current form, that hurts and that motivates us. And we, there is no hiding how important Champions League is for us. We've talked about from the beginning of being a global brand and a global club and a player in the global game. And that is one way of doing it and probably the best way of doing it, of being able to hopefully win Champions League. Seattle, and congratulations to them, they were the first MLS team to do it with their achievement uh, just under a year ago. And we hope that we are the next and that we are uh, representing MLS on the global stage. It's not going to be easy, but we do feel like with the group we have, as well as any reinforcements that come in, we'll be in the best possible position to succeed. And here's a follow up um, about Giorgio Cellini. Well, he's only six months older than he was uh, when we signed him. And I don't see his role changing all that much. I think Giorgio knows his body, what he's capable of. And I think he's shown everybody what that looks like when he is healthy and able to contribute. I think his first half against Austin was one of the best performances I've seen from a central defender in our league, and at halftime, he came off and said he was injured. So it was, um, Giorgio knows his body. I think he knows um, how to manage it. I think we have a great staff around him, and I think he, his leadership, whether he's on the field or not, is a critical part of our success last year, was a critical part of success last year, and I think that'll continue this year. Thank you. All right, we're just going to do the last two. We'll go to uh, Jonathan Siegel. Go ahead, Jonathan. you've learned or takeaways from getting Brian Rodriguez, Diego Rossi, um, and perhaps how that might inform LAFC's future if that is the route you guys go down. 
Great question. The answer is yes, we have learned a lot. We do a post-mortem on every decision we make, particularly the ones that involve significant resources, those we do a deeper dive. So all of the acquisitions we've made, whether it be a personality profile, uh, a, a, a transfer fee figure, whatever it might be, where a player comes from, age, all of those things, certainly we, we learn a ton. And obviously, we, we are careful not to overly generalize, but yes, we certainly have learned a lot from what has worked and what has not, which does inform our decisions moving forward. All right, we'll go last question. Andy, Diosa, go ahead, Andy. Hey, sir. Hey, John. Um, I just wanted to ask you about Eddie Segura. I know that there was a little bit of an injury concern towards the end of the year, and um, does that in any way kind of factor into ongoing negotiations if they still are happening, or is that um, something that's kind of been stated? Yeah, we are in very positive talks with Eddie and his representation. You are right. He did suffer an injury, a significant injury in at the conclusion of our playoff game against the Galaxy. We learn more about it in the offseason. So Eddie is going to be injured long term, but that does not affect our commitment to Eddie. And for that reason, we are in positive talks to make sure Eddie remains a part of LAFC.